Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to talk about the MRI pulse sequences. And my name is Marion. I'm going to dive right into it. So what are pulse sequences? It is a specific pattern of RL pulses that is applied to the patient with the magnetic field gradients. It will determine how the image turn out based on the body's protons. And this will control the contrast and the quality of the MRI images. It does have different tissues that is seen within different signals. And this is based on whether or not they will be T1 or T2 relaxation times. We have different types of pulse sequences for your T1 weighted. This is going to be the differences in tissue relaxation times or your T1, and the fat will appear bright and the fluid will appear dark. For your T1 weighted images, it's going to determine the difference in tissue relaxation times or your T2. The fluid will appear bright and most tissues will be relatively dark. And then you also have your proton density weighted. This image is closer to the actual proton density of the tissues that is provided. You also have your flare, which is going to suppress the signal from the CSF. It is very good and useful whenever you are looking at those brain lesions. I know a lot of times if someone is coming in to rule out a seizure, we always use a flare image. So just keep that in mind. If you have a patient who is coming in and they have a seizure, make sure or check with the radiologist to see if they want you to run the uh, flare. Okay, now we have more pulse sequences. You have your stir, which is going to suppress fat signals to visualize the abnormalities in tissues. This is very useful in different conditions like MSK injuries. You have your bone marrow pathology, edema, inflammation, spinal pathology, tumors or mass. And then you also have it going to create a high contrast between fat and other structures within the body. So whenever you are scanning, especially if you are a student or maybe even if you are a new technologist, you can pay attention or try to pay attention to your images whenever you are scanning and see how an image look whenever it's T2, T1 weighted or STIR. Know the difference between a STIR and a flare image, especially if you are a student. You have your DWI. This is going to measure the movement of water molecules. I know if I have an MRI patient that comes in and let's just say they're altered or they're claustrophobic and maybe I know or think they will not get through the MRI scan, I will run the scalp, of course, the sagittal image, and then I will bump the DWI image up first just to make sure that you get the DWI image to rule out any type of strokes. This is an example of your T1 axial image. You also have your T2 axial image. This is a brain image. All right, so now we have your axial flare brain image and your flare images within the brain is highly important because it will detect abnormalities as well. And it does show multiple sclerosis well because it can suppress the signal from the CSL. So whenever you are scanning or running the flare image, this is going to be useful for MS, strokes, brain tumors, encephalitis, different pathology conditions like that. Now we'll talk more about spin echo pulse sequences. This is going to use a 90 degree RF pulse to flip the NMV. And this pulse sequence is used to create T1 weighted images. It also uses a short TR and a short TE. So keep that in mind. It uses a short TR and a short TE. It can produce T1, T2, and proton density weighted images. And it's always going to start with a 90 degree R F pulse. And it will be followed by 180 degree RF pulse and then another 90 degree RF pulse. 
So a good way to just remember this, think of it as it'll start with 90 degrees, then go to 180 degrees, and then go back to 90 degrees. So if you can get that in your memory, then you can just easily know it and pick it out pretty much uh, which type of pulse sequence is spin echo versus a flare versus a stir versus echo train. Now for the echo train, it's going to use a lot of 180 degree RF excitation pulses. So think of it as, um, just think of it as a train. You're gonna start with a 90 degree RF pulse and then it's going to follow by a lot of 180 degree pulses. So just think of it 90 degrees and then 180, 180, 180, 180, 180 is creating that echo train. We have your proton density weighted image. The TR range will be greater than a thousand, so probably about 3,000, just keep that in mind. And then you have your TE range is less than 30, anywhere between 10 and 20. Your flip angle will be at 90 degrees, and it does use a long TR and a short TE. Keep that in mind. It uses a long TR and a short TE. So the disclaimer with the numbers is different facility will use different numbers. So that's why I'm just giving the range and then depending on, you know, what textbook we get the information from, what internet source, these numbers can change, especially with research numbers are updating. New studies is coming out that this scan is performing better at this range versus at that range. So just use the numbers as like a guide and an estimate whenever you are reviewing it. Just know that it will be within these ranges. All right, for your T2 image, the range will vary. Like I was saying, it's going to depend on what facility you work at, especially. So the TR will be greater than 2000. You have your TE will be greater than 80. Your flip angle will be at 90 degrees. It will use a long TR and a long TE. Let me say it again. It will use a long TR and a long TE. Now this is an image of your T1 for a brain. So the TR will be less than 800. So a good range for this would be anywhere between 400 and 800. Your TE will be less than 30. Your flip angle will be 90 degrees. It will have a short TR and a short TE. I will say it again. It will have a short TR and a short TE. Just keep that in mind. So the benefits of your STIR images in MRI, um, if you're looking at this sagittal cervical spine, this is a STIR image. And it's going to be very useful in MSK. That's why this facility ran the STIR protocol because this is a cervical spine, which is in form of MSK as well. So it can detect lesions or tumors that are found within a bone. It will have a long TR and a long TE. The TR is greater than 4,000 and the TE is about 50. Okay, now we have the benefits of the parameters for your TR. This is going to control your T1 recovery and control the contrast for T1. You have your TE, which is going to control the T2 decay and will control the T2 contrast. So that is it for part one of the MRI pulse sequences. I will make a part two because pulse sequences are or long and you have to like really draw it out to understand it you can't just rush through it so this is part one stay tuned for part two and i will see you all in the next lesson thank you all for watching